I'm gonna speak for about 10 minutes and perhaps for the first eight or nine it will not make sense why I'm here but hopefully around nine minute nine uh, it will make sense why I'm surrounded by people talking about blockchain and internet computer. Uh, just a quick intro of uh, UNDP in Singapore. You might know about the United Nations. UNDP has country offices in over 170 countries. In Singapore it's a bit special what we do. Uh, we work on sustainable finance, which is the work stream I lead, um, urbanization, digital, uh, digital inclusion, as well as climate and sustainability. And we work primarily with government and other institutions around the globe to tackle different uh, challenges. So today we're focusing on sustainable finance and financial inclusion for micro, uh, small and medium sized enterprises in the specific. So just to take you over the global landscape of MSMEs, we know that they are about 90% of all of the firms globally represent about 70% of total workforce and 50% uh, of the GDP globally. However, they're still um, facing around $8 trillion uh, of financial gap. And this is putting together both formal and informal MSMEs. And this is why uh, we started brainstorming around what innovations can be done in the sustainable finance space to tackle these barriers to financial inclusion. So looking at uh, the various side of the coins, both from an enterprise perspective and banks, of how come it, it is so difficult to get loans and access finance, we see that MSMEs face constantly very high interest rates, uh, a huge demand for collateral, which they might not have or cannot demonstrate uh, of having assets. Um, and then at, on the other side of the coin, we have the financial institutions around the globe, which uh, have a lot of uh, difficulties doing know your customer KYC activities because of lack of uh, data, but also the fact that they are focusing a lot on traditional data points, make it very difficult for MSMEs, especially in emerging economies, to demonstrate um, their credit worthiness. And so with this uh, background in mind, we came up with the concept of universal trusted credential, UTC, uh, which wants to find a new way to streamline data points of enterprises, uh, both traditional, for example, a business registration number or a tax identification number, but also alternative data points, uh, utility bills, mobile phone payments. Um, and so putting all of that together to reinvent how to do credit evaluation. So the UTC is not a new uh, credit evaluation model, but it's the step before. It's putting together uh, a data profile uh, unique for enterprises that then banks can use to do their credit evaluation. Uh, but so what we're doing now is to build international consensus around this, uh, this concept uh, and putting together data points that are trusted from trusted sources um, and that give you a sense of how an SME can repay a debt, um, a loan, and uh, it can and wants to repay the ability and intent. So it's very conceptual, but we're going to get into some more of the concrete details of this uh, so that it'll make sense. But when we talk, when we talk about UTC, there's two uh, components that we, we have in mind. There's the framework and there is the platform. So we can imagine the framework uh, of the UTC as an Excel file, uh, where we put together all the data indicators that are relevant for a financial institution and that are uh, easy to collect data points for an SME. And then uh, the platform is the, um, the mechanism that will help extract all the data points from the trusted data sources, credentialize them, and then yeah, create this credential that the MSME can use to uh, obtain a loan from a, a financial institution or to enter a supply chain. Um, the goal of this UTC is to be interoperable. So whilst now we go country by country uh, to understand what is the framework for country A, how can the data platform be developed, um, the goal is to have this interoperable between countries um, and uh, yeah, create trust between the MSMEs and the financial institutions globally. Uh, some more details on the framework. So part A uh, for the framework, again, it's a, a way to convey a credit worthiness profile of an enterprise, so their intent and ability to pay. 
We have uh, developed four different categories of data points, uh, basic ones around uh, business registration number, and then a second level on trade information, um, the utility, the alternative data points as well there. The third and most important would be the financial uh, data points and then there's also an ESG classification level um, which it will be it's a bit premature in the pilots that we're doing but hopefully um, it will take on more and more importance and this uh, for it is a real case scenario from Cambodia one of the countries where we're doing a pilot of how does the UTC framework look like again extracted from an exile uh, file the data points that you see are for, these are, are just five. The big framework that was developed in a white paper takes on 40. Uh, but again, it's just a template. Once you localize and you do ecosystem engagement, you realize that in certain countries, only uh, a short list of indicators will be relevant for both SMEs and uh, financial institutions. But yeah, you can see what is the data point, uh, what is considered as a trusted data source, mostly public uh, institution like Ministry of Commerce, uh, Ministry of Economy and Finance for the tax, uh, but also from pri private providers. Uh, so this is the framework, the part one. Part B, actually, it's quite readable. I was a bit worried. <laughs> but so this is um, what the, the design, the architecture of a UTC platform, um, which will operationalize the framework. So with the framework at the heart, uh, there will be uh, this mechanism that through APIs integration will extract the data from the public data point uh, institution and from the private on the other hand, and then we'll create the, the credential of the SME, which is verified. And then the SME can send it to financial service providers for a loan with less collateral or reduced collateral, uh, better terms or even to access green financing once, for example, the ESG component is uh, well advanced. And yeah, here we see there's a spillover of uh, benefits for the whole ecosystem from the SME that can access finance in the first place or formal finance. Uh, financial institutions will have a new market seg segment uh, for them to disperse to, as well as um, faster KYC processes. Governments are also incentivized because with the UTC, there's a, a big potential of tackling informal SMEs, like the informal economy. Um, and again, this is meant to be interoperable among countries. What we've done to date, so just also uh, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, uh, Singapore Central Bank is uh, giving seed funding for this initiative. So they've been our partners since last year. We've done uh, a few consultations over the past year through uh, central banks, uh, fun private banks, credit bureaus in countries and globally. And uh, at the Singapore FinTech Festival last November, we launched a white paper, which is uh, uh, globally, uh, it's uh, publicly available. And after the launch of the white paper, all the theory, we, can, uh, we got into the practice of country application of how to develop a framework. Um, and we've done that in Cambodia, in Indonesia, in Ghana, and Rwanda. And now we're engaging G20 countries. And so here it's when I'll say, why am I here? Uh, so at the Singapore FinTech Festival, we met with Definity. And uh, we learned about the internet computer protocol and saw a lot of similarities in how uh, they want to provide decentralized internet, uh, focus on inclusive, like inclusiveness. And so we thought about, OK, we've done part A with the countries we're working in, the UTC framework. We need to move into step B, which is the UTC platform. And so we're partnering with Definity to build the first prototype in Cambodia for this UTC platform, um, leveraging the internet computer protocol. Uh, again, because we think through this blockchain, it will be uh, very in line with what we're trying to achieve in terms of verification, sec data security. Uh, and uh, transparency. And we're very excited. We're, we're going to partner with Affinity. We're going to talk with the uh, Cambodian authorities we're already in touch with. Um, we're working with the Cambodia Central Bank, uh, with other sub-agencies of Ministry of the Government and Finance, and uh, as well with financial institutions. I see some of them in the audience here, which are very 
uh, willing to to do pilots with us and test how this in real life can uh, can be done and how it can be successful and then scaled. Um, and so that's about the UTC. Just uh, in case you're interested in learning more, uh, we're having we're hosting a roundtable with MAS, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, on Wednesday afternoon at the Point Zero Forum. Um, you're very welcome to to attend. It's an open door session, and you'll you'll see our counterparts from Cambodia, from Ghana, uh, and from Singapore, telling about the experiences they're facing so far. It's not about just uh, yeah all the lessons learned, but come, coming from challenges as well. Uh, but the focus will be especially on the technology. So part two, very exciting. And uh, Dominic Williams will also be there. So looking forward to that session. Also, I'm available for questions today uh, if you want to have more details on what are our next steps. And since I know ESG is uh, one of the topics, um, of Point Zero Forum and today. Just so you know, UTC is one of the initiatives we're leading. There is also another similar um, initiative called Project Savannah, which is also about credentialing, but create, creating ESG profiles for MSMEs globally through proxies. Um, and so, um, yeah, you're very welcome to approach at any time. And uh, thanks to the Definity team for giving us the space and again, on behalf of UNDP, we're very excited for this collaboration and uh, see, see how this works in Cambodia. Thanks.